My name is Paul Walker, elder of the Uri Uri Nation, and I'd like to acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of this country. We should say, I'd like, I, I would acknowledge, I do acknowledge the owners of this mm. country. And uh, I work with all the young ones. Uh, they listen to me, which is good. I sit back and we talk things over. They do all the notes and things like that. So I'm privileged to have young people with me that will listen to me and do the things that we want to do. And so it's good that you're the order. I didn't know we sponsored this talk. Yeah, I wonder my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a little bit about myself. I lived at Kamalaganji for just on 84 years. Never left the place. My grandmother was the midwife. It delivered me with beautiful black soft hands. I never left there. So my mother died when I was seven. So she took me and my brothers over. And I, under my cultural respect, all of a sudden I had two mothers. And. Um, so, as I said, I was expelled from school. So I learnt more when I went out into shear and sheds. And my elders were my teachers, not the school that I went to. And uh, so I had the privilege to... Uh, it was hard for me to go and sit on the Koori courts in Shepparton. Uh, I was approached by the judges and the magistrates when I go on the Koori courts in Shepparton. So I was there for 12 years. And uh, it, it's moved on to the county court now, so the magistrates and judges come up and asked me would I go on the county court. I said no straight out because there was no such thing as violence with our elders and on our missions. We couldn't get our partner or our wives or to the no-no. So I've been married now nearly 63 years next month or the month after to a Wiradjuri woman for 63 years. So <coughs> she's been my rock. <coughs> I was a bit of a bad boy when I was younger, like I've been a shearer. We had no brains and a strong back. So, <laughs> yeah. so I, I looked to my wife as my rock. So thanks for listening to that. And if any questions about the Koori courts later, I think it's good to have courts set up in, in our areas or a set of elders or something. I think it helps the young ones. Uh, and when they interviewed me, the judges and magistrates, they said, what was the most interesting thing for you, Uncle Cole, coming on the Koori Court? I was connecting up the young people who were lost, and there was no such thing as justice for us living on missions and things like that. And I didn't care how they took that. They could have said, well, we don't want you saying there was no justice. But they asked me a question, and that was my answer. So thanks very much. Uh, yeah, I acknowledge, um, I'm Sonia Cooper, um, and um, I work for Yorta Yorta Nation, but I'm also Yorta Yorta Blood in my veins. Um, Auntie Monica's asked, I was unable to come, so she's an apology, and in her place she sent me of all people, but anyways, I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, they, it's well known in my community, I don't do public speaking at all. But anyways, um, I... Um, Uncle Co I grew up on the mission on Kamagunja as well. So William Cooper's brother is my great, 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 great grandfather. So I'm straight from the Cooper line. Um, Uncle Cole's seen us grow up. The elders have taught us a lot of stuff. And now we're working in the corporation, I guess as soldiers or warriors are probably a better term. Um, so Yorta Yorta Nation, um, has at the moment is looking at sovereignty and looking at better ways to do things. Um, there's been different directions, you know, with corporations you can, you know, elect who you want into the into the corporation and, and sometimes the direction goes in a different way, but we feel that the direction's back again with Nani Monica and all our elders on board. Um, so at the moment um, we're responding to treaty in Victoria. Um, we feel like we have to react all the time, you know, like you know, government puts something out and we're constantly reacting. So, it, you know, it takes 20 years to react to, to certain things and you feel like your whole life is just gone before you. Um, so, a treaty in um, Victoria is, they've got legislation. I'm not sure how many people, is anyone familiar with what's happening in Victoria at the moment? No. Um, so, what they've done is they've created legislation 
called the Advancing Treaty Process for Aboriginal Victorians. In, and the legislation was enacted in Parliament in September 2000, oh, this year in September. And what it does is it actually, um, all anyone who identifies as an Aboriginal Victorian or a traditional owner, um, it has, must comply with the legislation, basically. Um, so it's very interesting times. Um, there's been a lot of push by, I guess, um, you know, there's people who are well known, um, political figures down there like Lydia Thorpe and a few other of the mob down that way who supports the, the treaty process. Yorta Yorta Nation and our elders got together. I don't remember what date that was, huh? but we got, all got together with the elders and they put out a public statement that they disagree and are not supporting any treaty in Victoria. Um, the treaty process at the moment is for Aboriginal Victorians and the definition for an Aboriginal Victorian is any Aboriginal who lives in Victoria. Just, um, and the definition isn't by, isn't by just the fact that you're an Aboriginal or a Torres Strait Islander. It could be any Aboriginal of any country. That's what I believe anyways. What would you say, Michael, mm -hmm. when you had a look at it? Mm. So Michael did that paper for us as well, which shows trick or treating. Mm. It's quite an interesting piece and a lot of um, uh, literature and background information um, for us to make an informed decision about treaty. We certainly don't support it. Um, they, they really mix up those words, Aboriginal, Victorian, traditional owners, um, and the legislation is, you know, if you identify as one of those, you basically have to comply no matter what. Um, I'm really concerned, we're, you're, as Yorta Yorta people, we're really concerned about that, and we're saying to other, to other sovereign groups, you know, you need to really look closely at what you're doing, because um, if you start making deals, you're gonna put us at harm. Um, so we're, Believe it or not, Yorta Yorta was the only organisation that received $100,000 worth of funds to do research on treaty. But we're doing it for ourselves and then we're going to put a position to the government on how we feel about treaty. Um, so that's, that's um, Yorta Yorta have asked me to, to lead the way with Annie Monica on that one. So we're looking into a whole range of different things. Um, I don't get treaty. It's, a, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, um, it's an unusual space. I haven't worked for government. I haven't been shaped in any shape or form by anybody. So I do find um, I have, um, yeah, I'm concerned about legislative genocide happening constantly, mm -hmm. you know, constantly all the time, no matter what you do, including with our organisations, um, corporations. I mean, you know, I'm talking about the legislation. Um, I recently learned that IBA, um, I just wanted to make a comment. Mm -hmm. um, that IBA funds $14 million to ILC every year to support um, the processes that ILC have. But the Indigenous Land Corporation just become the Indigenous Land and Sea Corporation. So now they have a bit of a monopoly over the water system across Australia. Um, they can now buy and trade. Mm -hmm. um, they've got new legislation on that, so you can check all that out. So that's interesting, interesting space. Um, Yorta Yorta have 10 original ancestors and 16 family groups. And at the moment, we're, um, they're organising themselves again. Um, we're constantly reacting, like I said. Um, we, we've got jurisdictional issues. Our country crosses over the border into New South Wales. In New South Wales, we don't have a say whatsoever. In Victoria, we have what's called the Cooperative Management Agreement. Is that right, Al? And um, that gives us a little bit of say um, not really, but it just gives us a little bit of, um, I don't know, I, st I still don't know what to call it. <laughs> I'm still confused about it. I actually don't believe it does anything. But anyways, we get a little bit of money and we get funded to do a couple of things. Um, and we just do what we want with the money, usually. Um, yeah, so what can I say? It's um, Victoria is in a state of crisis. Um, I think it's been that way for a long time, but I think... Um, we don't, I don't think Victorians talk about it enough. They either comply and go with the group, um, and if you stand up and protest, you're seen as a, you know, as a black fellow who's just, um, you know, a bit of a radical and all that sort of thing. So we have to, we have to combat our own people down there, which is a, a big struggle. So yeah, so and the elders don't want to be re-traumatized by another process. They constantly talk about the trauma that's happened from the native title case. So. Um, if you're not familiar, Yorta Yorta went for native title. Um, I think it was 1993. In fact, they say there was 19 attempts for native title since the very beginning, and we're talking way back in the um, late 1700s as well. Um, anyone have any questions? 
one, yeah. one thing I'm just going to add um, is that they're looking at the at different options. Yeah, we're looking at alternatives. Yeah, looking yeah. at alternatives to treaty and um, and looking at uh, the sovereign que the question of sovereignty and the governance surrounding um, sovereignty. And um, and so now that they have some research money, that that really gives them a, a, a good, um, uh, I suppose, um, launching pad into really defining their pathways as a nation of people. And um, so once they make their decision, that's the way they go, and that's that's the empowering of people. They they need all those options. You know, we all need those options. We all need to look at what options are available, and not look at one that's the government are pro promoting. Yeah. So and I, I, sorry, just yeah, one thing. I do like Yorta Yorta because they're fighters. They've been fighting all the time, and um, you know it's a, it's a it's a great pleasure to be associated with the Yorta. So at the moment we're tearing apart um, uh, the Yorta Yorta's asking me to look at every word in the legislation, basically tear it apart, and I'll find I'll find. Even though um, I'm very nervous talking to you guys, I. I'm very good at what I do uh, in terms of extracting stuff and stuff from legislation. Um, so I'll do my best for Yorta Yorta in providing a Yorta Yorta perspective on the legislation and also on where we go to from here. Did you have a question, Al? Yes, with our 16 family groups, you can only hear about what the elders can to get a vote on that and the government community get a vote on that. So, if you're a big family, you still only get in two votes, which has been great. It's kind of what happened with your ancestors. That's fair. Right? That's fair. Mm. Because you can't have the big family take over there. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the other thing about that act, um, the, the thing that I, um, Lydia, when she was in Parliament, Lydia Thorpe, um, she sent it to me and asked me to give her a brief on it. And um, when I read that, I think it's about the third paragraph or in something. The preamble. In the preamble. Yeah. The third paragraph of the preamble. It just simply says, uh, that this is for all Victoria, all Aboriginal Victorians, and it will contribute to the enhancement of Victorian laws. And I thought, well, why do you need a treaty now that you've written that there? Because, quite frankly, you've, they've just usurped all your power. They've also usurped your own identity, just in the preamble. Yeah? So you're not you're not your de order, you're Victorian Aboriginal. Yeah? So they own you immediately just through that through the way in which they drafted the title. That's and that's a legal fraud. Because they're telling you that, you know, this is a free choice thing, but they've already said you're not your de order, you're Victorian Aboriginal. Yeah? Aboriginal Victoria. So that destroys any sort of equality. Right at the beginning, because you're not equal now. You're a Victorian, so you've got to talk their language. The second thing is, is that it says that once you give up, but they've basically decided that once they get an agreement with you, well, then you've enhanced the laws of Victoria, which means that those laws now apply to you as the Aboriginal people. Yeah? Right now, you can argue that those laws in Victoria don't apply to you. So, so you, you, you've lost your case right there in those two things. And, and so you need to, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you guys later on about it, but, but this is the sort of uh, trickery in the English language and the way in which they develop things that we need to be very, very careful of and be very mindful of. Yeah. You know? but, yeah, we're very mindful of language that they use. It's very similar. You can just pick up on the words and um, basically you know exactly where it came from. Um, we have massive issues, no doubt you do too, with water in our country. Um, I was having a conversation with, what's your name? With Trevor outside, um, about you know, New South Wales obviously owns the water, and Victoria it's um, <coughs> it's an interesting space, you know, around our um, because our country goes across the border, we do have a lot of cross border issues, and um, governments not even even cross they actually have um, employed now. I don't know if you know of those cross border commissioners. Mm -hmm. They've got commissioners that liaise between the border these days. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're, they're in education to all different areas and. Um, yeah, that's a bit concerning too because that, that jurisdiction is also looked after in terms of the cross-border stuff. But yeah, so Yorta Yorta is, is definitely getting organised. We're definitely making a bit of noise. 
Uh, we don't really care what everybody else, you know, government thinks. We're just going to go and do what, what the elders want and go in the right direction. Do any of you have any questions? Okay. Do you see a time when, like, from what we gather, there's a lot of people talking about <coughs> clans in Victoria. Do you see a time when some of them might come back into the nation? Um, that one's a culturally sensitive one for us because us mob need to talk about that more. So that conversation at the moment is with the elders. So I wouldn't be able to comment on that one, as I've been told. Yeah. All right. Well, if you need to know anything, just come and ask. There's more stuff that I've missed out. Yeah. Um, just on that Canadian Bible case, I remember that there was a crucial wording that Something being wiped away. Mm. Do you know? Do you remember what the actual statement? Mm. Oh, can you can you talk to that camera because oh, it'll oh, it'll be well, up. Judge Arnold, I said the uh, tide of history has washed away our traditional ties. So I suppose in a white man's language, that was very damaging mm. to any Aboriginal community. You know. I thought that was, a, that was an insult because we still live off the land and still we have our medicine plants, our ointments we make. Our young women still weave and we, our hunting skills are still there. So, you know, so how are we going to educate people after all these years? So that was very damaging to us and we've lost some of the elders since. but. When that was on, a lot of us cried at court. It tore the inside fair out of us. Yes, it's an act of genocide. Yeah. Thank you, Sonny. Mm -hmm.